View the table of data below and find the chi-squared test stat that would be used to test the claim that row 1 is equal to row 2 equals row 3, or in other words, that all three proportions are equal to one another. Okay, so what we're doing here in this problem is calculating the chi-squared test statistic for a hypothesis testing procedure where we want to say that all the um, proportions for the problem are equal to one another. So when you look at the formula for the chi-squared test stat, it kind of tells you what exactly we have to do to solve the problem. The formula written out in symbols would be as follows. So as i equals from 1 to k, k being the number of categories you have or groups that you have. In this case, we have three groups, right? So it'd be i from 1 to k, which would be i from 1 to 3. And then we have the following fraction. It's basically observed minus expected divided by expected. And all of this is next to the summation, right? And you have little subscripts here for each of these. They each say i. And then the top part here is squared. OK, so that's your formula for the chi-squared test statistic. Let's explain what it means. The observed values are basically the values that you see in the problem that are given to you in the tables. OK, so these are going to be the observed values. Observed values for each Oops, I wanted to say each of the K cells and I started to put K there. <laughs> but for each of the K categories, let's say. OK, so OI is the observed values for each of the K categories. And then E sub I is going to be the expected values, the expected values for each of the K categories. Okay, so the OIs are easy because you just see the numbers, you put them in the formula. So there's nothing to do there in terms of calculation. But the expected values have a formula. So let's remember that expectation is N times P. And so if you're talking about for a specific value, it's EI is equal to N times PI, where P is the basically the probability according to HO. So this is going to be the probability, the probability or proportion under the null hypothesis. All right, so under the HO. So for example, in this problem, if we're saying that all three of these are equal, that's going to mean something about these proportions for each category, right? Since we're saying all of them are the same, well, they're percentages. There are only three categories, one, two, three. So every subject in this experiment had to land in one of those three categories. That would mean that essentially, when you look at the total possibilities, it has to be 100%. And in this case, if they're all the same, they have to add up to 100 and all be equal to one another. So that must mean they're each one third, right? So what we're saying here is very simple. Since, since there are three categories, is there are three categories, and they must add to one, right, or 100%, and they are all equal, they're all equal, we know that each PI equals one third. Okay, so that's a lot there written at the very bottom, but it's kind of an important idea. There's only two scenarios in these problems. One scenario is HO actually lays out the percentages that should be here. For example, one might say, you know, the first probability is 40%, the other two are 30% each. You could have a hypothesis like that, where it says P1 is 40, P2 is 30, P3 is 30. And notice all those percents would add up to 100, this one being 40, the other two being 30 each. You could have a hypothesis like that where it lays out the specific percentages for each group. In this case, though, we say that they're all the same. And that just means you take 100 and divide it by the number of categories you have, and that would be the probability for each category. So in this case, 100 is represented by 1. So it would be 1 third for each of the PIs, right? 
So this is the simplest case here. Actually, they're both simple because, of course, if they're all equal, you just divide one one by the number of categories, and they actually have the percentages given, then you know the percentages. Now, the n here is the total number of values that you have in the table if you add up all the counts together. These are cell counts, right? They're the numbers of people that fell in each category. If you added them all up, that's your n for the problem. Okay, so now that we've explained what the formula is, we've, we've written it out, we've explained what each item in the formula entails, we've talked about how to get these expected values, now it's time to actually do the calculations. So let me get another sheet of paper out and we'll work this problem out. Okay, so the best way to work out a problem like this is to create columns. So if you're gonna be doing it by hand, you should do an observed column, you should do an expected column, then we're going to do an observed minus expected, then an observed minus expected squared. Then you'll have an observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So these are gonna be the columns that we create. Okay, so let's fill in the observed column. To fill in the observed column, you just copy down the numbers you see in the table, 75, 74, 78. To do the expected column, remember we're gonna use the formula, right? n times pi, but since each of them are just a third, we're gonna get the total here for the observed column. That'll tell us what n is. And then from there, we'll divide each of the, we'll divide that by three, and each of these expecteds will be that number. So 75 plus 74 plus 78, it gives us a total of 227, 227. So 227 is the n for the problem. So that's our observed total, but it's also our n, right? So now that we know our n is 227, let's divide it by 3. If we divide that by 3, we get the answer 75.6 repeating, and that's essentially what's going to go in each of these expected value cells, because we expect a third of the people to be in each category, or a third of the subjects to be in each category. Okay, so there it is, 75.6 for each category. All right, now our expectation is done. We're going to do observed minus expected. So observed minus expected means you're going to subtract these two and see what your difference is. So for example, if you do it in that order, 75 minus 75.6, you get minus 0.6 repeating, right? That sort of thing. So let's just go down and do all the rest the same. So 74 minus 75.6. So of course, you get 1.6 or negative 1.6 repeating. And then you do the same thing here. So we'll have 78 minus 75.6 and 2.4 is going to be your answer for that. Okay, so there's your observed minus expected column. Now from there you want to do observed minus expected quantity squared. So you're going to square each of these values. So we'll do 0.6 squared. I'm not putting the negative in because when you square a negative number it becomes positive anyway. So I'm just going to say 0.36 for that one. 1 1.6 squared. 2.56, then 2.4 squared, 5.76. So that's your observed minus expected squared. Now that we've finished that, our next column, and this is the very important column of the procedure, the one that matters most, we're going to do observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So we're going to take everything in this column and divide it by what we see in this column. And since they're all the same here, it's nice and easy to do. We're just going to do 0.36 divided by 75.6 repeating, 75.6, and I'll add a bunch of sixes at the end of that, okay? So we get the answer 0 0.004757757 7. And then I'm just going to round off to that many places. So in this case, I have seven decimal places. You might say, geez, that's a lot of decimal places. Well, I just want to be extra careful and make sure that I do not round too early. Now here in this problem, you know, we're not going to have as much of a concern with rounding too early because we're just going to add to get the rest of the answer. But still, you know, I want to be disciplined in that skill just to remember not to round too early because and sometimes it matters and sometimes it doesn't and it's just better to have the good habit of not rounding until the end. So 5.76 is the last one, divided by 75.6 repeating. All right, and we do that, and we get the answer 0 0.076, 1233, 3. Okay, now, from there we're gonna add these together, and that's our answer, because if you had to give a name to this total, whatever this total turns out to be, 
If you had to give a name to it, you'd say what? It was the summation of this column. The column was observed minus expected quantity squared over expected. And that's exactly our test statistic. So this is going to be our chi-squared test stat. All right, so let's add that up and see what we get. So I have the other one in my calculator. The last one's in my calculator. So I'm just going to add to that the first two. So 0 0.004757. Okay, so 0047577 plus 0 0.033326. And when I'm done, I get the answer 0 0.1147136 dot dot dot, right? Okay, so that's basically our solution. And with that, um, that's our chi-squared value. So our answer to the problem, our chi-squared test statistic, is simply 0 0.115, let's say. We gave it three decimal places.